How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mancy Gaming. We have a new video today where I'm going to show you guys how to set up your combat for 15 minutes of AFK, which I am a huge fan of. Honestly, the fact they added the 15 minute AFK is going to change my life when it comes to RuneScape. I will probably actually be playing more, which is pretty awesome. Most of the time I am just like doing price checking and working the Discord and stuff, and now I think I'll be making more of that combat uh, progress, which I really need. That is basically the only thing I need to do to be all maxed out in my combat skills, and I should probably start Necromancy at some point, but you know, it's level one, so hey. Um, anyway, today's video, that we're gonna jump into that. Also, I wanted to mention that we are starting our December giveaways. So if you remember from last year, we did do a December giveaway every single day. We're gonna be starting those up today. So if you want to win this year, we're gonna be doing two chances per day for each people for each person to win. So you have two chances. Right now, the giveaways are at 50 million gold per person. So you can win twice in one day. That would be pretty awesome. Anyway, we're gonna be doing that for the entire month. So make sure you join Discord down below so you can win. All you have to do is click and to enter on the announcement. And then in this video, you need to answer this question. And as long as you've done both those things, you'll be good to go. Today's question is going to be, what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> That's right. Doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what your situation is. If you could pick something you want for Christmas, then put it in the comments down below and then click to enter in our giveaway and you are all set. Also, for the lap, for the rest of the holiday season, we have our Patreon tiers on sale. So if you want to join our Discord server and become a Patreon member, which you do not have to be one for the giveaway, I just want to make sure that's clear. But if you want to join our Patreon and start earning up to 10 billion plus per month and get yourself some cool looking party hats like this blue one, then make sure you go check those out. They are all on sale for the holiday. This is the cheapest time of the year that you can possibly get those. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump on into the video because this one is going to be a good one. So when it comes to trying to make combat into 15 minutes long, most of the time, unless the enemies are aggressive, you're probably going to have a really hard time staying there for more than 6 to 8 minutes depending on the potions and buffs you're using like the aggro potion with the incense, you're only really going to get 8 minutes out of it. But I have found a way, which many people probably already know this method, but for those that don't know this method, this is probably going to help you out quite a bit. I'm going to show you guys how to turn that into 15 minutes. So what we're going to do is we need to go over to the invention bench when we get there, we're going to go look at the combat support, and then we're going to look at the potion reservoir. So this does require an invention level of 112 so if you don't have that level then get to Kraken um, invention is actually pretty fast to level up so if you don't have this level then don't worry about it too much you just have to start working on it it's really not that hard to get up there honestly getting to 200 million invention was one of the easiest skills I did in the entire game so it's really not that bad to do it just sounds like a high level if you don't have it already and then what you're gonna need to do is make these potion reservoirs which do give you 150 invention XP every time you make them which is pretty sweet so you will be getting some XP as you are making them as well and then what they do require is going to be one potion flask some simple parts and some clear parts so the simple parts you probably are not going to have too much of a problem getting those you can disassemble all quite a bit of different things in the game and get the simple parts the potion flasks are also pretty easy to get you can actually craft these on your own so they don't cost you anything um, if you guys want to see a video on a quick way to craft these then just let me know and i'll let you know you can also buy these if you want to but that will cost you a little bit more money but like, like i said you can craft them so it's not that bad the uh clear parts are probably going to be the thing that are going to throw you off a little bit because I have a decent number of clear parts now I've got a little over 2k and I will show you guys in this video how to get a whole lot of clear parts while also getting some components to make some money in other things. So just to be clear of what potion reservoirs do is when you load a potion into them then they will automatically use that potion for you which means you can really really not pay attention because it will automatically use the potion for you so even though these are a little bit of a pain to make they are definitely worth using and they're about the only way you're going to be able to sit there for a solid 15 minutes on most things there are some things you can get away with not using like aggro potions on and stuff but this will make it so you can afk pretty much everything in the game now, if you look at the wiki page for Potion Reservoir, you can scroll down right over here and you'll see this full list thing. And then if you click on that, it'll show you everything that can be loaded into the Potion Reservoir. So the ideal thing to put in the Potion Reservoir is going to be the Holy Aggro Overload. And that's pretty obvious because what it will do is it will restore your prayer. It will also give you Overload and it will give you Aggression Potion, which means that you can put everything basically into one slot. And that is awesome because it is also important to know that you can only have one of the potion reservoir active at a time. So you can't have one for aggros and another one for overloads or anything like that. It doesn't work. So you have to have as much boost into one spot as you can. 
So if you don't have holy aggro overloads yet, then just work on getting these. If you just, you know, you want to start doing this method I'm showing you right now, but you don't have these, then you can also mostly just put the aggro potion in there because you can't really do this at all. Like you cannot sit there for 15 minutes on most things without the aggro, po without the aggro flask. So that would be the first thing to use and then just upgrade to the holy aggro overload. If you really, really, really don't have most of the requirements, then I guess you'll just have to end up clicking things, then using incense to make it eight minutes long, but that would, you know, kind of ruin the point of the potion reservoir. <laughs> so there are a pretty good list of requirements to make potion reservoirs really good, but if you are a person who's been playing for quite a while, then you probably already have these things unlocked. So go ahead and grab a potion reservoir, make some holy aggro loads and load them in. So as I mentioned before, you do need to get clear parts. So clear parts are a little bit annoying to get because the really cheap way of doing them is going to be vials and vials are extremely slow. So uh, let's go over some options of what you can do. So if you have the level 105 junk reduction nine, then you can go ahead and click on that. And this right here, by the way, is if you search for clear, then if you search for clear parts on the RuneScape wiki, then you can just click, simply click on the disassembly by, by material. And this is a super useful page whenever you're looking to disassemble anything in RuneScape because this will show you about how much you're going to spend and how many materials you get per hour. And so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of decipher this for you and show you the best ways of doing this because it's not quite unclear because there is a way to get a good amount of clear parts while also getting some parts for some other things which you can sell and make some of your money back. You can actually maybe even make profit doing this depending on the prices, but let's go ahead and take a look. Now, if you look up here, you've got the option for the junk reduction, like I just said, and then you've got which one of these you end up using. Keep in mind that if you do decide to use an auto disassembler, it is gonna cost you roughly 100 gold per disassemble because you do have to pay for charges. So that is something you can do is you can just use the machines. I have another method of doing, doing disassembly, which I mostly will be doing myself, that will include manually disassembling that, and I will show you that one in just a moment. But this is probably going to be one of the better ways if you do not have much of a budget is just doing the auto, auto disassembler and then doing something else in the game. It should be known though that if you are doing the auto disassembler, let me show you what this looks like. If we go over to cost per mat, by the way, and click on that, this is mostly what you wanna click on is the cost per mat. If you look at Earth Orbs um, right here, we can see that there is 30.5 materials per hour. So you only get 30 of the um, clears per hour. So if you're only missing clear, that means you're only gonna be able to make six of the reservoirs per hour, which is pretty slow. Now, if you go over here and you click on no machine, which means you are manually disassembling them, and then you look down here now, it says 1528 materials per hour. So you can kind of tell why I preferred honestly just to sit there and manually disassemble for these is because if I want to get these made, I want to get them made this century and not in 20 years. Um, so this is a heck of a lot quicker. If you click on the invention master cape, by the way, you'll notice that the materials per hour drops a little bit. And that is because the Invention Master Cape prioritizes the more rare components and the uh, clear components, the clear parts are actually considered a common, so it, you'll get a little bit less per hour of those. I still do use the Invention Master Cape, which I will go over why I do that in just a moment. But if we look down here, then we can see we'll get about 15, 19 materials per hour and the cost per material is only 353, which is pretty awesome. And that is doing the earth orbs. Earth orbs is the best way to do it because if you look at price per disassemble, these are by far the cheapest one at 179. The fire orbs are coming up next at 227. Uh, there is a 5,000 buy limit per four hours. So if you just really wanna rush through this, then you can just buy fire and earth orbs. If we come down here to vials, by the way, like the power verse vial and the regular vial, as you can see, these are really, really, really cheap. They're only one coin. And you can see that the cost per material is dramatically less. If we look at this, there we go. If we look at this cost per uh, material, it is way, 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 way less on doing the vials. So if you're on an extreme budget, then doing the vials is a good way to do it. But honestly, I would recommend just making some extra money rather than sitting and disassembling this because if you look at materials per hour, we're down to 217, which means that we'd be doing this for about seven and a half hours compared to one hour of earth orbs. So despite the fact that these are you know, in, in comparison to the price, they are dramatically higher. You would be doing it for way, way longer, which you could be going and doing something else that would make you more money instead. If we look at the auto disassembler for regular vials, it's a measly four per hour. So I wouldn't even bother doing this because it actually won't be as cheap because they, you'll be adding 
into the cost of disassembling. As you can see, the price per material goes up dramatically because of you spending the charges to make this happen. So there is one more page that is really, really useful to look at when it comes to disassembling things. If you were looking at the other page and you're like, oh, you know, the earth orbs give me a few different things. I kind of want to see what all it gives me because it doesn't give you just the clear parts, which is a pretty important thing to keep in mind, which is what I was talking about when I said that you can get components to make other things. So if you look up earth orb on the RuneScape wiki and then you scroll down, you will see right here in disassembly, there is an open calculator. So also you can see that it gives me other things. And the main thing I want to pay attention to is enhancing components. So if I open up the open calculator right here, and then you've got this page right here, you can see what you would get if you did a thousand of them. So let's do 5,000 because that is the limit for like uh, every four hours you can buy that many. Now, if we looked right here, once again, this has all the different options for disassembly. If we look right down here, we've got the clear, delicate, smooth, enhancing, and junk. So enhancing is what I wanna pay attention to, also the clear parts. So if we look right here, you can expect from, from disassembling 5,000 of them with no machine, no cape or anything, 2548 of the clear parts, 218 of your um, enhancing components. So you will be spending the 351 per material on this, but, 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 you will also get 218 enhancing components to go with that, which I will show you in just a moment that you can use those to make some other money. If I click on the invention master cape though, watch the enhancing components. Boop. So from 218 to 262, that is quite a bit more enhancing components if you do use the invention master cape, which I mentioned before, What this is right here, the reason why I do use it. So if I look at the clear parts, 2532, no machine is 2548. So yeah, you do get slightly less clear components, but I don't know anybody who wouldn't want to trade 16 clears for about 40, actually more than 40, 44 I think it was, I think it's 44, yeah, 44 enhancing components. That is a lot more enhancing components for just barely losing any clear parts. If I look at the auto disassembler MK2, by the way, it's going to be basically looking like what it looks like when you don't use a cape at all. So you'll be getting this right here and this, and then you can see how much you'll be paying per clear if you auto disassembled 5,000 of them, which makes this calculator pretty awesome as well. But anyway, with the master cape, we're gonna be looking at this. We can see enhancing components. If I, if I right click on this, open up a new tab, and then go to enhancing components, let's see why I would want those. You might already know, but Basically, you are able to make augmenters with these. So augmenters can be used and that will give you 353,000 gold back when you make the augmenters. You also need to use the enhancing components for other things uh, like mechanized siphons. If you don't have 200 million in your invention or whatever goal you're looking for right now, then mechanized siphons are pretty awesome if you're gonna be doing something like Vyres or hey, if you're gonna be doing 15 minute AFK combat, these are pretty amazing. So you're gonna wanna use them anyway. You will want to use them for augmenters eventually too, because that way you can just get some money back when you do that. Okay, last little bonus here, and you'll understand why I'm showing you this in a second, even though it doesn't really have to do with potion reservoirs, but it kind of does. If you look right here, you can look at faceted materials and also your precious materials. So faceted and precious are both used in awesome different things, and I'll show you, let's look really quickly what they can be used for. Precious are used in a lot of things, honestly. There's gonna be quite a few times in your RuneScape gaming, playing or whatever, that you're gonna really want to get some precious. Once again, that you need them for mechanized siphons. So you already are gonna be able to get the enhancing components from doing the earth orbs, and now you can get precious components from the thing I'm about to show you, but you need 50 of these and 50 of these other ones, which means that, yeah, you're gonna to wanna to get these. You also need to use equipment siphons themselves to make the mechanized siphon, which, Guess what? Equipment siphons use precious components. And I'm not gonna go through this entire list, but as you can see, there's quite a few things that you want precious components for. And I'm gonna be showing you guys where you can get that and why it's related to the uh, the potion reservoirs. Good, good, I'm saying too many things. If we look over here too, we can look at the faceted components. Faceted components, if we look at that really quickly, don't get lost on me now, I'll show you how this all makes sense in a second. You can get the enhanced devoted, which is definitely used for things. And if you go try to get fasted on your own, they're actually pretty dang expensive and kind of rare to get. So whenever you can snatch up some extra faceted, they are definitely good to do. Now, okay, 
why am I telling you about this? And the reason why I'm telling you about this is because of rubies. So if we look at rubies and we scroll down a little bit and we go to this calculator that I was talking about just a minute ago, we've got those fasted, which we need. We got the precious, which we need for many things. And then guess what? Clear parts. Woo so there is an alternative to doing the earth orbs and that is the rubies. So rubies are by far the best of the gems to do. And if we open up the calculator right here and let's say we are going to disassemble 5,000 of these rubies, then let's see what we could get. We're gonna click on the invention master cape again if we have that because as you can see with the precious faceted and lights, which aren't used as much, but precious and faceted, if we click on this invention cap cape, boom, those numbers go up quite a bit. So if we were to disassemble 5,000 of these, we would get 1,700 of our clear parts, which we need for the potion reservoirs. This is quite a bit more expensive that we are paying for the clear parts, but keep in mind though, that you only have to use five clear parts for one potion reservoir. So you're only paying 5,000 gold to be able to make that potion reservoir. Well, obviously with the, with the other components you need, but you only, you're only really paying 5k for the clear parts. That's not that bad. Uh, if you know, if you're using potion reservoirs, you're not going to use that many per hour. You're going to be making more of that money back doing the combat anyway. So it's not really that relevant, but this will give you the option to get 177 precious, which is definitely going to make a lot of things for you. And then 59 faceted, which is awesome because these are pretty hard to get. So if you don't mind spending the extra money and you would like to get more than just the clear parts, then rubies are a really great option because you will get a lot of things, a lot of extra things while you are doing your disassembling. Okay, so now we have everything we need. We've got our clear parts. I showed you how to get those and some extra stuff, which by the way, um, as, I, as I mentioned, Part of the reason why you want to do those extra things that may not be the cheapest option is because you can get some money back with those other components that you're going to be doing. We've got our potion flasks, which I've got some in my inventory here. And like I said, I can make a video on that if you guys want to, which shows you a really easy way to get a bunch of these. If you want to see that video, just put in the comments down below. And then we've got a simple parts, which I didn't cover these. If you want me to make a video on these, then go ahead and let me know. And I will also make a video on these, but these are pretty easy to get. Um, most people probably already have a bunch of these. So this right here is all I need. And then I'm just going to click on manufacturer. And then we will just sit here and make these. So as I mentioned, you get 150 XP per each one, which is pretty awesome. You know, that will just rack up a good amount of XP because if you make a lot of these, like they will add up pretty good. As you see, I'm not getting XP drops though, because I am 200 million, but this is obviously a great way to get some XP once you are level 112. As promised, I am going to show you guys another way of the, this is basically the reason why I do not use the invention machines for these. Now, obviously you can, as you see, I am in the area where you would be doing that. Um, I kind of prefer to disassemble other things in the background instead of doing these because I want to get these done. But let me show you what you guys can go do. It's actually very, very simple and it's pretty awesome. You're going to want to go to your fort. So as I have taken a pretty massive break from RuneScape and for everything except for basically just uh, flipping and investing and doing the Discord stuff, that's pretty much all I've done for like a year and a half now. Um, the fort is something really new to me uh, because I have not done anything with it, uh, but I am working on my fort now. So right now, if we look in the fort though, while you are in the fort and you are doing some skilling, you will be able to get rested XP. So if you go over here and you talk to your dude in the uh, whatever this room is called, I kind of forgot. Uh, but if you look over here and we talk to Aster, then we can click on bonus. And then if you click on bonus, you will be able to click what skill you want your bonus XP in, which is pretty cool. So you can put it in pretty much everything except for a necromancy because that's not available yet, but later on it will be. But you can get bonus XP in literally any of these skills. There's a couple of cool things of, of like, you know, that you can do with this. Number one, you can use it for Vic the Trader. So if you want to go trade an XP, bonus XP, I mean, then you can easily do that. If you want to use like the lamps so that that way you can crack the bonus XP and get more XP, that's also also too. And then if you just want to get bonus XP in general. So if I click on my attack XP because I need combat, boom, there I get, well, well, a very measly amount of XP because I actually just, I just cashed it in like a few minutes ago. <laughs> Why am I going to be doing that here? Because while you are sitting here and disassembling with your invention cape, which I hope you have, if you don't, that's okay. If you look over here, it does give me in my fort increased your rest XP. I get three rested XP per tick. And that is because well, not per tick, but per however often it drops, then I will be able to rack up rested XP. You need to have this room into your tier three in order to be able to get uh, the three rested XP. But once you do, it'll give you three rested XP every time you get it. 
So you're sitting here and disassembling and you're gaining bonus XP. If you rack this all the way up to 1500 or however high you get it, it's going to be quite a bit of bonus XP. So I will still be able to progress my skills even though I am standing here disassembling, which is pretty sweet. There's another way to do it as well. If you if you don't really care about that rested XP, another thing you can do is you can go to Menaphos. And then when you go to Menaphos, you basically just need to be in the Menaphos area. And then when you are in the Menaphos area, this is something I've been doing for you know quite a few quite a few times when I would disassemble or doing something else. When you're in the Menaphos area, you can simply go up here and click on the one that you do not have maxed out in. I haven't maxed it out because I was just waiting for Slayer, and as you can see, I don't really do combat. So if I click on my Merchant, for example, then I can have this set to Merchant, and then when I have that set up and I go down here and disassemble, I will randomly every once in a while get some faction rep or whatever it's called. So that is pretty awesome. You'll get faction rep just by sitting here and disassembling. So you can kind of choose between whether you want to sit here and do it, you'll do it here, or you can also do it while you are sitting in the new area. There is one more place that I can think of too. Um, actually a couple more places and any, literally anywhere that you're going to be just bang standing. Like if you are waiting for a mini game to start or something like that, you can also do this or something else too would be that if you are using a cannon and you have your auto attack turned off, auto retaliate turned off, then there are some some areas where you can just have a cannon going while you're sitting here disassembling as well. So there is lots of ways to do it, which makes this disassembling part not too bad. But anyway, guys, I hope this really helped you out. All you got to do is make these potion rev reservoirs, load them up, load your potion up into them, and then just go and sit and do some AFK combat. I will have some videos upcoming very soon where I show you guys some really cool areas to use those potion reservoirs. But anyway, I hope this video helped you guys out. Please hit that subscribe because honestly, that's the only only way the channel's ever gonna grow is if you slap the subscribe button boys and then hit that like please and leave that comment down below for our christmas giveaways and i will see you guys in the next video have a good one